There are places on our planet that still contain some astonishing ruins, originating from a very distant antiquity. Quietly studied by academics the world over, and just as quietly dismissed as modern works, are from not-so-distant, more primitive ancestors. Or, if fated enough, attributed to natural activities by geologists, funded by the same infrastructure as that of the academic world, paid to explain the origins of the ruins of Earth to a particular already permitted timeline. Not only are these funded individuals directed to only attribute such sites to a certain timeline, but if they go against the grain by actually attributing them or sharing data contradicting such timelines, it is often thrown out and their funding ended, slowly drying up with their future opportunities in the field as well as their prospects and ultimately their reputation. Regardless of this, facts do not lie. And the more one explores the anomalies we present here on our channel, the more one may find themselves coming to similar conclusions as we have regarding the illogical nature and often impossibility of these advanced ancient ruins having been created using now lost knowledge or technologies once being the work of the academically claimed culprit. Siberia is indeed one of these places, and due to the remote nature of some of the ruins found here, are easily dismissed, hidden from a modern world, battling to regain the truth regarding our past. Altai is an area that contains many ancient megaliths, so old they are undeniably the legacy of a civilization now long lost to history. Yet this tremendous age is a double-edged sword. Not only could they eventually reveal, like done during current studies of the antiquities already covered on the channel, reveal that ruins found across the globe just don't date from a single civilization, but are, in fact, the work of separate civilizations who have presumably been and gone at different times, making the flourishment of man and, indeed, our eventual decline a cyclical occurrence, but due to tremendous age can also be dismissed as nothing but mere geological features, this regardless of the still remaining highly eroded evidence that can be found at such sites, which is indeed indicative of artificial origins. Furthermore, there also exists a number of supposed hillsides that just like the pyramids of Giza, have resisted the tests of time more successfully than their polygonal counterparts, meaning their undeniable shape and alignments have survived long enough for them to stick out like sore thumbs amongst a landscape which is unbalanced and predictably unaligned, a background made by nature, yet their angle of descent, their ridged edges, and ultimately their artificial nature still allows one to recognize them and identify them as not only places of interest, but ancient pyramids, hidden from man for countless millennia, protected by mountain ranges and hostile, inhospitable climates, which our modern technology is slowly allowing us to rediscover, regardless of a modern academia who would rather we didn't. Additionally, not only can these artificial and highly intriguing features be found here, but also possible evidence to indicate how their creators came to an untimely demise, possibly at the hands of immense heat and a possible natural disaster. Found within the nature reserve of Ergaki, among the western Sayan mountain range, is a feature that has rarely been seen, let alone photographed, an entire side of one of the mountains was, at some time within the distant past, turned to magma during an event yet to be understood. Turned to liquid magma, this stone flowed like liquid, but only for a short period before re-solidifying. A relic from a disastrous event undoubtedly packed tremendous force. Yet, whether this is evidence of the event which decimated the ancient civilization responsible for Siberia's ruins is yet to be fully known. It is a place that is undoubtedly highly compelling. There are many places on our planet so remote or little mentioned that much of the world has never heard of said sites. 
and the Great Salbic Kurgan is one such example of an incredible ruin that has been largely forgotten or overlooked by modern academic study. Clearly of a Neolithic age, the thing which is most striking regarding the ruin is the sheer size of the megalithic blocks which make up the main structure. Claimed by many as the most majestic and mysterious ancient monument of southern Siberia, the mound is located in what is locally known as the so-called Siberian Valley of the Kings, where several thousand years ago, it is claimed, there existed a kingdom, one made up of a people once known as the Tagars. Thus, the age monument has been pinned on said culprits, with an age of around 2,300 to 2,500 years attributed to the site. The main earthwork is a stone square mound, 70 meters by 70 meters in size, as mentioned, huge slabs of Devonian sandstone. Some estimated as weighing as much as 50 to 70 tons were somehow once inexplicably delivered to the site from a quarry site of over 100 kilometers away, found upon the banks of the Yenisei River. It is believed that it was an ancient temple, and at a later date an ancient astronomical observatory which like most other Neolithic sites incorporates processional cycles in its alignment, showing the movement of the sun and the moon. As mentioned, it still remains a complete mystery as to what devices were once utilized for the importation and installation of these gigantic stones. At the corners and sides of the stone fences are deeply driven large meniers. All 23 stones are of an enormous site. Measuring up to a height of 6 meters, they're clearly smoking guns flying in the face of upheld academic fallacies. The rare excavations and explorations noted as having been undertaken at the site note that before the construction of the giant earth embankment and its accompanying stone fence, there was a crypt of logs in its place, once in the form of a truncated pyramid. This whole crypt can be found inside the huge earthwork, preserved beneath, untouched yet covered with a thick layer of bark. The crypt had the height of 2.5 meters in depth of 2 meters of water covered the pit. It is claimed that around the burial zone, for a long time, a strong anomaly has continually been observed. The study of these phenomena has indeed been engaged by scholars, but the pace of said explorations has been suspiciously slow-paced. Who built the Great Salbic Kurgan? How were these huge stones transported to the site and once driven into the earth at the site? What is this quote, strong anomaly? More investigation and popularization of the site is desperately needed. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. A very important discovery has just been made by a Georgi Sidorov in a remote Siberian mountain range in Russia. Gigantic stone megaliths and megalithic structures containing the largest stones we have ever recorded being built with. This place in Siberia is where a beast is said to have killed nine campers in the 1950s in a place called the Dyatlov Pass. In this mysterious and uncharted area of the world are hidden, undocumented and unexplored pyramids, larger than those of Egypt. Huge megalithic advanced structures buried under thousands of tons of stones of the same size, creating hills of stones, concealing whatever is within these mysterious buildings. A peculiar black pyramid, so strange and so remote that only distant photos of this structure exists, made entirely of quartzite it supposedly electrifies the entire area. Many rocks and even mountains around the world are claimed by some to be ancient. Heavily eroded, created megaliths, although they are rarely proved to be so. There are numerous things that stood in the way of confirming the seemingly impossible to be true. Firstly the sheer weight of stone blocks found in some areas, it was thought 1000 tons was around the limit physically possible of being moved. The largest and heaviest megaliths we have discovered up until now are still in situ, meaning they are still at the quarries, either partially cut out or completely cut out and not moved anywhere, leaning support towards a physical limit in how much slaves could drag. The theory put forward in academia is that of slaves building these huge stone structures, dragging huge stones weighing upwards of a thousand tons in large groups. The unfinished obelisk in Aswan, Egypt is upwards of 1200 tons it was left in the quarry due to a crack that was discovered, it turns out, not because it was too heavy to move, the pregnant woman in Lebanon weighing 1000 tons also in situ. And the heaviest found in China, that many have said was not cut out completely due to it being impossible to move, is located in Yangshan quarry, a stone that has thought to weigh 16000 tons. 
This discovery then by Georgie is pretty important, as it pushes the physical limits of what we understood possible when moving and building with such enormous stones. Literally pushing the laws of natural understanding to near breaking point in our modern day eyes. These stones some upwards of 7 meters in height, weighing in at many thousands of tons, are stacked and placed next to and on top of each other with extreme precision. This discovery is set to rewrite current theories on the techniques used to move such ancient megalithic stones, and who could have built these structures with the stones. It should be clear to you by now that we need to revise what we thought we knew about ancient civilizations on Earth, and just how advanced they appear to have been. I doubt anything we build now, could last longer than a thousand years, let alone tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands. As always, thanks for watching. During our extensive research into the Neolithic Age, explorations into the countless Stone Age ruins, which can be found all over the world, a hypothesis began to form regarding their past possible identity. However, evidence continues to mount suggesting that this was incorrect. Stone Age ruins like that of Stonehenge are all part of an existing legacy of a civilization which, according to mainstream paradigm, lived over 10 millennia ago. A people who displayed incredible capabilities, not only in the quarrying, moving, and eventual placement of many stones in excess of 100 tons. The incredible displays of earthworking, mounds and barrows formed from thousands of tons of earth, all of which was once laid atop these underground layers. All of these remarkable features are indicative of a group who were once bestowed with tremendous capabilities. Research provided by various specialist fields, alignments displaying a past, intimate knowledge of solar processions, so complex, we have only very recently been able to fully understand just how astonishing their accuracy was. For Avebury within the UK holds Neolithic lunar alignments, found to be precise down to the fifth decimal. MH felt that due to the seemingly primitive nature of many Neolithic stone buildings that, although this ancient people clearly displayed incredible abilities, their structures on the surface, however, also appear not as advanced as many other enigmatic ancient builders. Due to this, we presented a thesis that the Neolithic people were a surviving fragments of a once far more capable, yet now lost civilization. We theorized that these groups, scattered across the earth, still possessed the knowledge to move said stones, yet had lost advanced technology. We have instead unearthed fitting historical details to support another, more intriguing theory. We found that many Neolithic sites, clearly constructed over extended periods of time, share uncanny similarities in their constructions to other ruins located on other continents, even displaying a somewhat deliberate, intended use of rough uncarved stones. And the Great Salbic Kurgan is no exception. An enormous Neolithic barrow found within modern-day Siberia, although locally known as a Kurgan, this barrow, just like that of the Flintstone-esque dolmens, also found across the world, is virtually identical to New Grange, a winter solstice-aligned barrow we have previously discussed in several videos. Thus, with this mounting, collaborative evidence, MH's hypothesis of Neoliths, having once been surviving groups of a post-cataclysmic world, has all but been proven wrong, and they were instead the work of a once flourishing, globe-trotting civilization. It would appear that these ancient monuments were built by a once prospering, worldwide society. And just like that of the pyramids of Giza, ancient Peru, Lebanon, China along with countless others, were all constructed by past world-conquering superpowers, who fortunately left their proverbial fingerprints all over their particular sites, with the so-claimed Neolithic Age now found to be no exception to this rule. Who were the Neoliths? How are we supposed to believe the claim that these astonishing structures were somehow created by people wielding nothing but flints and whom never made contact? How did this group align their monuments so accurately? And perhaps most important of all, what were these structures' original purposes? It is imperative that we continue to unravel that which has been successfully withheld from us for too long. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling.